الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار as always, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I find each one of you in good health, wealth, and iman. Ameen. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if any one of us is going through any difficulties, frustrations, anxiety, sorrow, sadness, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes it and He replaces it with this sakina. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives me the tawfiq to provide a reminder that's beneficial. Beneficial in the way that it gets us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Effective in the way that our love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam increases. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. You know normally whenever I give a, a Jummah khutbah, I, I mention one virtue of today, of, of uh, the day of Jumu'ah. And one of the virtues is that this is a day when we make dua, the dua is accepted. I encourage you all to make dua for whatever needs that you have and also make dua for everybody else. So inshallah ta'ala, I will make dua for you, you make dua for me, make dua for my children. And then on that note, you know, one of our dear musallis, uh, Brother Hussein Farag, he's in the ICU. He's in, uh, at the UCLA facility, you know, he's one of our musalli, he has a right upon us. So when you're making dua for your loved ones, please include him in your duas that he gets a quick recovery, he returns back to his loved ones, and inshallah ta'ala very soon he comes back and attends the Friday prayer. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. You know that today, Jumu'ah, you know, it serves many purposes. You know, for us Muslims, you know, we live in very busy lives. A lot of us, majority of us, in, including the one who speaks in front of you, it's hard for us to go to prayer on a regular basis. But today, you know, it, it's a day that's been prescribed for us that we come. And it's an opportunity for us to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's an opportunity for us believers to learn what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects from us so that we can find inspiration and motivation to continue to be a better Muslim. But on that same note, it's also an opportunity for us Muslims to learn about things that we should avoid, that can cause us harm, that are considered major sins. You know, normally, when we speak of major sins, the most common things pop in our mind. Like for instance, we know gambling is a major sin. Getting into interest is a major sin. Drinking alcohol is a major sin. Eating pork is a major sin. Fornication is a major sin. But you know, something that is so simple to do, it's a major sin, but we overlook it. And it's, it's kind of unusual because everybody does it. It doesn't matter if you're relig religious or non-religious, if you're young or you're old, everyone does it. And what is that? And the, the sins of the tongue. You know, there's a lot of sins associated with the tongue. Imam Ghazali, he mentions in his book, there are 20 sins associated with that. But I'll mention a few, you know, for instance, gossiping, lying, um, not keeping one's promise. And this is something that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would always encourage his sahabas to always protect your tongue and be cautious of the things that you say. So for instance, once a companion, and you'll see this common thread, this is something that he would normally do. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is um, a, a companion comes to him and he says, Ya Rasulullah, give me some advice. Give me some, some advice 
that is simple to do and it's something that I can adhere to. So the Prophet of Allah said, he said, make this statement, say that you believe in Allah and be steadfast in this statement. You know, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects you to do, be, live your life according to that. And then the companion goes on to say, he says, Ya Rasulullah, what is that one thing that you fear for me the most? <laughs> and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he took out his tongue and he pointed at it and he said, this is what I fear for you the most. SubhanAllah. Once Maaz bin Jabal radiallahu ta'ala an, he's traveling to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on a journey. And <coughs> Maaz bin Jabal radiallahu ta'ala an, he said, you know, this is a good opportunity for me to get some advice from Rasulullah. So he gets close to him. The hadith mentions that he got so close to him that their knees were touching. And he says, Ya Rasulullah, tell me one deed that will lead me into Jannah and keep me far away from Jahannam. And it's a long hadith. And the Prophet wasallam, he tells him about Iman. He tells him about Hada. He tells him about Zakah and Hajj. He tells him about Salah. He, he tells him about Tahajjud. And at the end of that, he says, O oh Maz, should I tell you one thing that encompasses all of those things? And Maz bin Jabal said, yes, of course, please tell me that. And once again, Ya Rasulullah takes out his tongue and he says, if you can con control your tongue, that includes all of the things that I mentioned to you. And Maz bin Jabal radiallahu ta'ala an, he was in such awe and shock. He said, Ya Rasulullah, the things that we say, does it really play such an effect? And the Prophet of Allah said, the things, the words that we utter can be the means of us entering into Jannah, but it also can be the means for us entering into Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. <coughs> so what are some things that we can protect ourselves from? Something that are so common to do, but it's what we overlook. So once the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asked his companions, he said that, what is backbiting? What is ghiba? He said, what is backbiting? What is, what is ghiba? And his companion said, Allah, Allah is messenger or no best. So the Prophet of Allah said, to mention something about your brother behind their back that they would dislike. So the Prophet of Allah said, and, uh, <coughs> and then the companions asked him, he said that what are, what, the thing that we're saying about our brother is true, what about that then? And the Prophet of Allah said, that is the true es essence of ghibah. Imam al Hassan al-Basri rahmatullah alayhi, he says that when you talk about somebody negatively, behind their backs, you fall into three categories. Number one, if you make a comment about your brother that he dislikes, and it happens to be true, it is considered ghiba. If you were to mention something about your brother behind their back, and that is not true, then that is slandering. And if you were to mention something about your brother, you don't know if it's true or not, then it's gossiping. You know, something interesting, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asked his companions, he said, who is the bankrupt person? Who is the bankrupt person? And his companions gave him the obvious answer. I think a lot of us would give the same answer. He said, the bankrupt person is the one who has no wealth and no property. <laughs> and the Prophet of Allah said, no. The bankrupt person is, is who someone on the day of Qiyamah will have a mountain of good deeds. He performed his salah, right? He made his... Siyam, he fasted, he did tahajjud, he did all of these good things, but he's gonna have to disperse them because he caused somebody harm. He gossiped about somebody. You know, he said he did terrible things that caused somebody harm. So you know, on the day of Qiyamah, our currency is our good deeds. And it's something natural, you know, when someone says something bad about me, the natural reaction is that, you know what, I should say something bad about him too. How did our you know, our scholars of Islam, how did they even handle that? Once someone came to Hassan al-Basri rahmatullah alayhi and knocked on his door and said, you know what, someone is saying something bad about you. <laughs> someone is 
you know, they're, they're gossiping about you. They're saying these bad and horrible things about you. Imam Hassan al-Basri rahmatullah alayhi, he got upset. He said, why are you telling me these things? You know, tell me something good. Give me good news. Don't, you know, this stuff causes confliction between the community. The next thing, Hassan al-Basri rahmatullah alayhi, he went to a person's house and he knocked on his door. The person who was speaking badly about him. And when he opened the door, he was shocked. Oh, Hassan al-Basri rahmatullah alayhi is here. You know, is he gonna ask what I said about him? But no, matter of fact, he had a plate of dates. He had a plate of dates. And he said that, you know, you gave me a gift that I cannot return to you, so I'm just giving you a plate of dates. Someone did that with uh, Imam Abu uh, Hanifa rahmatullah alayhi. Someone, you know, came up to him and said that, you know, someone's saying these terrible things about you. You should do the same to him too. And what was his response? He said, I don't love him that much. <laughs> I don't love him that much. Why would I want him to give, get my good deeds? If I were to do ghiba about anybody, it would be against my parents so that they can take my good deeds. SubhanAllah. So, if one is in a gathering, this, you know, backbiting, gossiping, I know it's a, such an easy, simple concept. It's a concept that we tell our children, but unfortunately, even as elders, we get caught up in that. If you find yourselves in a gathering where people are backbiting, what should one do? What should one do? The first thing is that you should defend that person. If you're brave enough to do that, you should defend that person. Second thing you should do is that you should stop them. And the lowest thing that you can do, if you can't stop them, then just walk away. You know what? Gossiping and backbiting and causing rumors, it has a domino effect. You know, I'll tell you a story from a very conservative community, a community here in the United States. And it was, you know, when I heard about it, it broke my heart because, Alhamdulillah, it's not my child, so it's okay, I can go ahead and talk about anybody else's kid, child. So the story was that a young girl who was going to high school, when her parents would drop her off of school, she would take her hijab, she would not wear the hijab. But when she would be in school, she would put her hijab back on. So when as she was leaving the school, once again, she would take her hijab off. So some of the other kids in that school were like, you know what? <laughs> you know, is she living a double life? Why, why does she take her hijab off when she's out of school? You know, normally you would think that, you know, she's ashamed of it or something and it spread like wildfire. And the reality is, the truth of the matter is, is that the parents didn't want her wearing hijab, so when she would be outside of school, she would take it off because her father would get mad. And she would wear the hijab in school because she, you know, alhamdulillah, you know, her parents are not there. It's, one is the reality and one is, is not the truth. But the, the harm that it caused, it had a domino effect. You know, and as a community, we have to think like that. You know, if that's somebody's son, that's also my son. If that's somebody's daughter, then that is also my daughter. <coughs> and what happens, you know, when we start to gossip, and when we start to spread rumors, what happens? You never can see the good in people. And everything that they do is always under suspicion. The Prophet wasallam he said, if you go out looking for the fault of the Muslim, you will ruin them you will ruin them. And think about that. In reality, you know, every time, imagine, every time you and I did a bad sin, it occurred on CNN, or Fox, or ABC News. Wallahi, each one of us would have a hard time getting out of our house. Even the one who speaks in front of you. It is only through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah that He hides our sins. Um, in another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this is very scary, the Prophet of Allah said that if you go out of your way finding the faults of others, then Allah will go out of His way to seek your faults. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes out of His way to seek your faults, who is going to protect you? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, once again, a companion came to him and he said, give me advice. And he said that, don't say something today that you have to apologize for tomorrow. You know, sometimes silence is golden. You know, there was a poet. He said that, I wish my, 
my neck was a mile long. So when, whenever words came out of my mouth, I had some time to think about what I'm going to say. Right? Once again, I, I, I share another hadith. The Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, those whoever believes in Allah and last day should treat their guests with a lot of honor. Then he continues on and he says, those who believe in Allah and the last day shouldn't cause harm or inconvenience to their guest, uh, to their neighbor. And lastly, he says, those who believe in Allah and the last day should say a good word or remain silent. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we use our words in the most positive ways. And we say things that inspire people. And if we don't have something good to say, then we should remain silent. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikri al-Hakim astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa lisa'ir al-Mu'mineen fastaghfiru innahu huwa al-Ghafur al-Rahim Bismillah Bismillahi walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, Just a few announcements inshallah ta'ala One is another request for a special dua for Bibi Hajira uh, She is in critical condition We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives her good health And that she returns back to her home Next um, This is uh, inshallah ta'ala I'm hoping that it's good news for our sisters uh, on, on March 9th, which is next Saturday, the Valley is having its first women's conference. Right? It's having its first women's conference. It will be from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. And it will be only for, for our sisters, for our mothers, our sisters, our daughters, our wives. And why are we doing this? Um, one is that we want to promote our women scholars so that the women from our community can benefit from them. You know, we want to promote that, we want to encourage that. You know, normally, I'll, I'll give an example, you know, sometimes when the khatib, he gives a Jummah khutbah, and normally if the men have questions, it's easy for them to go ahead and ask questions. Sometimes it's hard for the sisters, or they just might be shy, or they don't want to ask a question because it's an uncomfortable question. So they would rather ask a sister. So this is something that we're trying to do that it's specifically for the sisters. It's a whole day conference from four to nine. It's free of charge, appetizers, dinners, everything is free. I just wanted to provide a small summary of the speakers that will be there, inshallah ta'ala. Um, number one, the first speaker who's going to be there is your very own Ustada Lubna Mullah. She will be there, inshallah ta'ala. You know, sometimes, you know, when we have our scholars who are local scholars like Sheikh Suhail Mullah, Right, or you know, Stada Lubna, we kind of forget how special they are. You know, I'll give you an example. You know, I, I lead the Taravi in Santa Clarita, and one time she came over last, last year for a Qiyam, and the sisters over there were so overwhelmed by her ilm. You know, Alhamdulillah. So it's an opportunity that, you know, Ustada Lubna can be a benefit to other members in the community. The next speaker will be uh, Ustada Rubina Ahmed. You know, she is a tafsir teacher for a lot of our mothers. You know, my, my chachi, Manas chachi, Nazma auntie, auntie, my own mother, they attend her tafsir program at Granada Hills Majid. And it's something that is very, very popular, alhamdulillah. The next speaker is Ustada Sumeya Tariq. She's a young woman, she's probably 23, 22. And alhamdulillah, she holds three ijazas in the Quran. <laughs> not one, not two, but three. <laughs> you know, and Alhamdulillah, you know one time, you know, she's my, uh, she's my co-teacher at, at another masjid. And, uh, you know, one of the brothers said, you know, have her make dua. And I was like, you know what, it's okay. And, you know, I, I give so many duas after the tarawih khatam. You know, I was like, you know, what special dua can she make? But wallahi, when she was making dua, what I realized at that time, whatever men can do, our women could do much better. <laughs> SubhanAllah. And you know, whenever we have these Qur'an competitions, Qari Talib holds, her students always win. And I, I tell her blatantly, I said, Ustada, you are the best Qur'an teacher in the valley. Young woman, 23. 
The last speaker is Ustada Salma Shukur. You know, she's one of our Sunday school teachers. MashaAllah, she's a hafiza and alima. And she's a very popular teacher in our program. You know, this year we, we broke up the youth group between the boys and girls. And when we did that, some of the parents were like, why are you doing that? Why are you separating that? I said, you know, there's, the girls are getting older. They need some, something that they talk to the girls on their own. And in the beginning, we only had three girls. Going forward, we have a waiting list to get into our class. You know, these young sisters, are, they're like role models, and they're like shining stars. And this is something that we want to encourage in our, in our young girls. Just as badly we want our sons to be hafiz, we want our daughters to be hafizah too. Just as we want our sons to be scholars, we want our daughters to be scholars too. And I'll end with this quote. It's a famous quote. It says that if you educate one, if you educate a man, you educate one person. But if you educate a woman, you educate a whole nation, subhanAllah. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it's a benefit. March 9th at Granada Hills Majid from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Free of charge, I encourage you all to please come, inshallah ta'ala. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusallun ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Ibadullah, inna Allah ya'mur bil adli wal ihsan. Wa ita idhi al-qurba wa yanha anil fahsha iwal munkari wal bawth. Ya'idhukum la'allakum tathakkar. فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون أقم الصلاة